Hi, this is Jeff from the Ozark Mountains in Missouri, USA. Well, we've got another TRS-80 Model 100. Um, I didn't originally start out to make a video on this. I've done some of these recently. And uh, this one has such an interesting failure. I started a video partway through the repair. Um, you know, the boring part of the repair you see me do already, clean the battery contacts and uh, the corrosion from leaking capacitors and everything. I'd already done that when I started. I did that before uh, trying to find the root cause of the failure because, you know, I knew all that stuff was broken, you know, broken and fix what you can see before you get into what you can't because you don't know maybe there's a trace that's corroded that you're going to find when you clean things up. So anyhow, that was done and then we get into looking uh, for the root cause of the problem, which was a strangely garbled screen. So let's get started. Thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. They not only do PCBs and flex PCBs, they also have 3D printing service, in injection molding service, they do CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication. They also have a thriving maker community where you can share projects and check out what other people are doing. For your next project, head on over to PCBWay. Here's what the LCD looks like. Notice the first four lines look okay and the clock is ticking. That's important. Uh, the fifth line is messed up and if you pause it you can see it's the clock printed over and over and over. The next two lines are kind of messed up and the bottom line is goofy as well. Here I've got the test harness attached and we're looking at the test harness LCD. Looking at the results of all the tests you can see what fails. And we'll go into more detail on that next. This is one of the test harness tests that failed. Uh, this is the parallel port test. It's trying to write out 00, zero but it read back E0. Uh, this is a big clue that the top three bits are stuck. So I jumped right into testing those with the oscilloscope. After we go through the oscilloscope uh, segment, We'll look at the schematic and find out we could have uh, deduced that or known to check those bits anyhow. So I left the test harness off for our uh, testing the signals, which I've got marked here on the 81C55, the PIO chip. So we're going to test pins uh, 21 through 28, which is all of port A, and see what those signals are doing. So this way, uh, with a regular ROM in there, it's going to be trying to talk to the keyboard and doing other things. So we'll get constantly, should have constantly changing signals. PIO pin 21, 28. So the three high bits are stuck high. So we know that our LCD is not acting right. And if we didn't have the test harness, that's all we would know. But if we look at what controls the LCD, we've got the 8155 port A, a couple pins on port B that also controls the keyboard, which doesn't seem to work quite right all the time. It goes to the real-time clock chip and to the printer port. Um, and there's some other signals over here which come from the other side of the 81, 81C55. Uh, since it's just the three high bits, we know it's not going to be the, the clock chip because this that just takes from PA0 to PA5. Um, so and since it does the same thing without the LCD installed, we know it's not a problem with the LCD itself. So it could be something physically on the board. Um, some traces shorted with gunk or something like that. It's not going to be in the keyboard because even with the keyboard not attached, it does that. And it could also be in 
M32 here, which is the 40H244. That's a bus latch for the printer port. That goes to all eight of those port A pins. And it's, oops, you can't see that. Let's whiteify. And that guy's all the way up here. So I think the next thing we'll do is do a visual inspection of the board, look for anything that might be uh, holding these three pins high. And um, I've never seen an 8155 fail. I'm sure they can. Uh, this is buffered from the outside world. So um, it's not as hard a life as something that was tied directly to the outside world. Uh, this buffer chip here is another thing. Maybe it got zapped from something over the parallel port or something like that, but we'll inspect the board. I've removed the 244 chip. I haven't tried replacing it or testing the chip uh, because this will run without it. It just won't print. So I'll go ahead and turn this guy on. And we still have garbly garbly stuff. Very, very interesting. So we've still got something up with those three bits and it wasn't the 244 chip. There, there you can see a little better. Yeah, same thing. So as you can see, I've pulled the 81C55 parallel I.O. chip. And we did find a little spot of corrosion under here. Nothing terribly bad. It probably been another 20 years before that caused a real problem. But we'll go ahead and we'll Clean all that off there with a fiberglass brush. Yeah, we'll throw a screwdriver at it for good measure. Then I'll I'll seal that like I did for all the capacitors and everything. This uh, did have quite the corroded battery box, and you can see I removed the battery contacts that are on the board here and here. I need to pull some out of a, a donor case that's busted up. To put in here um but now let's test that 8155 and see what happens so here is a new acquisition let me zoom out it's a back bit chip tester uh, this is the version 2 it doesn't have the jumpers to set the voltages it does it all automatically Got it set to the 8155 Intel mode, 15 to 41 chips, 8155. I left the little plastic on there for as long as it'll stay, I'll leave it on there. Keep the screen from getting scratched. So I'm going to select that test and press this rotates and pushes and you press this to test. So failed three tests. The first time I ran this, it failed two tests. And the nice thing about this tester, it doesn't just blink lights and say passed or failed. You can look and it'll tell you what's failed. I failed port A, that's the port we're having problems with, port B, and port C. The first time I ran this, it only showed failing port B and C. So uh, powering it up for a little while, um, even just for the duration of the one test, I did it. And you can see the result here is glowing red. So. This is pretty handy, and while we've got it out, we can select, return to the main menu, and where is our 40H244? So can also try this as 74HC. Two forty-four. Okay. Since we've got that two forty-four out anyhow. Even though this says forty H two forty-four, 
Uh, generally, the 74HC series are compatible. Let's see if this will test like this. Oops. Select it. Test. Yes. All right. So, and you can see it's glowing green now. So that 244 we pulled out originally was fine. Uh, it's the first failure I've seen with an 81C55, so I'm going to see if I've got one I can scrounge off another board. So I stole an 81C55 from a T102 donor board. I've got that test selected. Here's another feature of the back bit. If I rotate the knob back now, it says normal burn in and the burn in test will keep running. So before I was doing the test, you know, over and over again, all the time, this will just keep doing it continuously. As long as you let it run. So our replacement chip's good. Let's go ahead and get a uh, socket. Uh, soldered in there for those chips that we removed and we'll pop the chips in and test it. So we've got the 8155 replaced. We're going to go ahead and turn it on and it works. Everything's on the screen where it should. The keyboard works. The clock works. Uh, we're in good shape. But to be sure everything's working fine, we're going to go ahead and put it back on the test harness. We've got the test harness connected and the test running. And uh, everything passes this time, so the 8155 did fix it. Um, after this test is done, I'll hook the LCD and keyboard back up and test those. Uh, right now, I've got just the dongles in there. And then I always do kind of a functional test by typing in a couple short test programs before I'm done with the machine. Well, we've got this Model 100 fix, another one saved. Uh, it was quite an interesting failure. First failure of an 8155 I've seen, but I'm sure they failed throughout the years, but it's just not as common on the things I work on. Uh, the point I wanted to make with this video is uh, tools like the chip tester and the test harness are nice. Uh, they can give us additional confidence in our diagnosis. They can help point us in the right direction. Uh, but uh, these types of tools alone can't do the job for us. We can't test every chip on the board. Uh, they may not test every chip right to the edge of its capabilities, and so it may be failing on the board and test fine on something like this. Uh, this is something the documentation for this clearly states, so uh, don't take this as the gospel, or any chip tester, as you know what they're saying as the gospel, because they're not testing under the exact same conditions that the chip is designed to meet, you know, even temperature, uh, current outputs, things like that. So uh, it's a very helpful tool though. Our observations uh, of the failure and looking at the schematic would have been enough to lead us in the right general direction. You know, it would test the control signals going to the LCD because that's the failure we can see. Uh, we would have found those three bits stuck high, which is wrong. Uh, those being stuck high would correspond to the failures we're seeing. And, you know, then we can deduce that it was only one of two things, probably one of three things, I guess. Uh, they could be physically shorted somewhere on the board, which we didn't find. Uh, even ohming them out didn't reveal anything different between the pins. Um, so there was only two chips left. Uh, the 40H244, I pulled that first because it had less pins. It was less difficult to uh, pull and it was connected to the outside world and those types of chips tend to fail first. It was fine though. Pulled the 8155, uh, tested it on the back bit, found it was bad, pulled uh, another one from a donor board, it tested good, popped it in there and that fixed it. So uh, helpful tools give you confidence in uh, your diagnosis, help uh, verify that a chip is bad, but we kind of had that idea already. And like, if you have to solder a board, or, or a board, if you have to solder a chip directly to a board for space constraints, then being able to test it ahead of time uh, is very, very helpful. It gives you additional confidence that the thing's gonna work. Anyhow, this was a fun one. Uh, interesting failure, interesting diagnosis. 
I hope you've enjoyed it. Any questions, uh, just leave them in the comment section down there below. Would love to hear from you. Thanks to everyone who helps support the channel. It's greatly appreciated. Um, you can find more information about that in the description below. Uh, well, until next time. Bye.